If you're a photographer, you will find that the retouching tools in Photoshop are some of the most important and useful tools that are available to you. Of course, they're useful for retouching portraits, but they're also important for just about any type of photo that you might be working with, for landscapes, uh, for fine artwork, and of course, for fixing up old photos such as these. I'm going to go ahead and open this image by double-clicking on it here in Bridge. And before I do any work on it, I'm going to make a couple of changes. First, I'm just going to duplicate it so that the changes that I make are on an independent layer and not affecting the original. I'm just going to do that by dragging it onto the new layer icon in the Layers palette. And then I'm going to add a Curves Adjustment layer. And this is just to help get the tones in this photo corrected. I'm going to bring my highlight slider down. These tones here, I know from looking at this before, are really uh, not important to this photo. They are this uh, white space around the border of the image. So I'm cutting that out. And I will also bring the black point up just a touch. And if I don't like these settings, since it's an adjustment layer, I can always come back and make changes later. But I'll leave it like that for now. The last thing I'm going to do before I get started with the retouching tools is I'm going to make a group for all of this work that I'm doing now. I'm going to come down here again to the Layers palette and click on the little folder icon here to create a new group. And then I'm going to move these layers into that folder just by dragging them there. Okay, and you can see that they are inside of that folder by the indentation of the icons. Okay, with my setup taken care of, I'm going to make sure that my new background layer is selected, and I'm going to select the Spot Healing Brush Tool. The Spot Healing Brush Tool is probably the simplest of all of the retouching tools, and I'll show you why. I'm going to begin by zooming in to my photo here. And I did that, incidentally, by pressing Control plus. That would be Command plus on the Mac. And here's a little detail that I would like to replace. With the Spot Healing Brush tool, all I have to do is paint over the top of it. And Photoshop automatically replaces that um, spot with some detail that is similar to what's around it. Again, paint over a detail, and Photoshop automatically replaces it with something similar to what's around it. Now that works really nicely on small details, especially if they are on a uniform background. Something like this is replaced pretty flawlessly. The larger you get, the less likely it is going to work properly. And that is especially true if you don't have a uniform background surrounding the uh, spot that you're replacing. This is probably going to work, but if I come up here to a larger area like this, what you might not be able to tell is that the inside here is a little bit darker than the outside. And there are also these um, scratches on the photo. And that's also going to affect how this works. So here I'm just replacing the entire area by painting over it. <coughs> And 
And the result, I'm going to zoom in so that you can see that a little bit better. The result is actually a color that is just about right, but the texture is completely wrong. Um, all of this, this texture is actually from the paper that was um, printed, that the, uh, the original photo was printed on. Um, the original photo was only a couple of inches tall. It was a contact print. So there's plenty of detail in the scan, but um, the scan did pick up the uh, texture from the paper. In any case, I'm going to press Control z to undo that, and <clears throat> I'll show you that there's another tool that usually works better, and that would be the healing brush tool. The healing brush tool is similar to the spot healing brush tool, but it is different in one major respect, and that is that you get to choose uh, the detail that you are going to replace the painted area with. So here, for example, I am holding down the Alt key and pressing Yes, I'm clicking here while holding down the Alt key. When I release the Alt key, you can see that the area inside of my cursor is actually the area that I selected. And as I paint over this, the smaller cursor to the right shows where that detail is going to be pulled from. And Photoshop will try to match that texture in. In this case, it worked okay. There's some texture. It looks better than the spot healing brush, but the tone isn't quite right. And probably the reason for that is that this layer is being affected by um, this curves adjustment layer. And without that curves adjustment layer going, uh, those two areas look a little bit better, but with it, uh, they're not quite right. If I were to merge these two layers, I would probably have better results with my healing brush tool. As you can see, I've taken a step back in this photograph, and I have restored this uh, ugly black spot here that I had previously used the healing brush tool on. I did that so that we can come back later and uh, treat that with a different tool. But before I move on to that tool, let me take a look at a different photo just so that I can show you exactly what the power is of using the healing brush tool. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Uh, obviously this is a photo of a couple of lily pads in a pond. On this half of the screen you can see clouds reflected, and in this part of the water there's some blue sky. And what you might not be able to see is right in here there's a dark spot, which is some dust from the sensor of my camera. What I'm going to do is replace this area with some of the texture from over here. And I can do that with the brush tool, because the way the brush tool works is by replacing the texture, but matching the color and tone from the surrounding area that you're replacing. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and click here, and come and paint over that with this nice blue texture that's just the same. And as you can see, Photoshop has replaced that with the texture, but matched it in. And um, that is really the strength of this tool. It means that you can 
sample the texture from areas that aren't the same color or tone as the area that you're replacing. Okay, enough of that. Let me move back to the image that we started with, and I'll move on to the clone stamp tool.